card number 57, Lou Boudreau, Hall of Famer. And in the background was the Williams Shift, which uh, he helped devise. And you can't do that anymore. So Card Room Live, session number 57. What's up, everybody? Uh, just a reminder that this is not a show. This is a hangout for fellow vintage collectors. I mean, we'll let anybody in here, but primarily vintage collectors. Sometimes we have guests, but most of the time we waste time looking at and talking about cardboard and through it all, we try to make it time well wasted. So happy Sunday evening to everybody. Uh, if you are here live in the chat, uh, I hope you'll make yourself known. Hello to you lurkers out there. Don't be a lurker. Say hello. Um, it's okay. If you want to be a lurker, that's fine. Uh, we all lurk sometimes, but uh, I hope you'll say hello and uh, introduce yourselves, especially if you're new. Uh, if you are listening to this later, you might be going to work, coming home from work, sorting your cards, looking at eBay, walking the dog, sitting on the john, wondering if Near Mint Musings will ever make another video. Shout out to you, Brent. Hope you're good out there. Miss you, buddy. Hope to see a video from you soon. Whatever you might be doing. I hope you get something out of this. I hope you have a good time listening to it. I hope it helps pass the time. And so here we are, another Sunday in August. Uh, just a reminder, if you want to get in touch or have ideas for future sessions, you can email me at bowman53channel at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram, bowman53 underscore Alex. And I'm on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Uh, as 1953 Bowman Color. You can always find that information located in the description below this video. So good evening, everybody. Nothing uh, super planned for tonight's session, although I do have a couple questions that I think might bring up some interesting topics. We'll see what happens. Um, but before we do that, let's get into the chat and see who's here tonight. So I saw this comment was in here even before I started from Carlisle. I'm hoping Alex decides to throw a curve and open session 57 with 1953 Bowman, black and white, 57, Andy Pafko. No, no such luck. But that's a good idea, Carlisle. What's up, John? Hodges, 1455. Good evening to you. Rick Acosta is here. What's up, Rick? Hello, Johnny boy. I like your icon there. What's up, Dean? Dean Gerhardt is here. Uh, A's Fan Jim is here. What's up, A's Fan Jim? Uh, D Pyers, thank you for the shout out. Yes, um, this uh, session is not sponsored by Ebbets Vintage, but I do like that place and I get a lot of my shirts from them. Mookie, what's going on? Mookie Chilson is here. Dan is here. Dan's Vintage Baseball PC. Uh, He's here, everybody. Timeless Cardboard is here. Um, you'll be excited for uh, next uh, session, next Sunday's session. Hello from the Rising Sun. Alan is here. All right, we got a good group going. Um, curious if anybody has any, any vintage baseball card topics that they'd like to throw out there um, before, I, before I get started. But, uh, yeah, it's been a busy weekend for me uh, on YouTube. Uh, finished up a video, posted it, been responding to comments on that video. And I've also been trying to catch up and watch a lot of uh, other YouTubers' videos and trying to leave comments as much as possible. It's, uh, it's tricky sometimes in terms of just the time to do it. Um, I know we all try to watch as many videos as we can. Um, and the problem is sometimes we watch videos in different situations, like you might be watching it on your TV or you might be watching it you know, in transit somewhere and you can't necessarily stop and write a comment. You can like the video, but you can't say anything necessarily. So uh, I, I'm definitely guilty of that. I'm trying to, uh, to leave comments because, you know, I don't think anybody is necessarily hurt if you don't leave a comment, but um, outside of talking to the person about the video, comments is the only way that they know that you've that you're out there and that you're responding to their 
their their videos. So trying to catch up and try to watch videos and uh, and leave comments because I know I definitely like to get comments on my videos because um, it's just fun to talk with everybody out there and uh, and go over thoughts on cards and, and videos and stuff. So, all right, what's up, Dom? Got my first fantasy football draft of the fall in just an hour. Good luck to you. Uh, Dan's been catching up on his Mangini videos. Um, um, the new Red Heart video is Chef's Kiss. Brilliant. I like I like that Chef's Kiss. I appreciate it. Um, thank you. Thank you for the shout out, Mookie. Um, oh, I think I missed. What's it worth? What what will it grade? Is it real? Um, it's worth what someone will pay. It will grade a number out of 10, and maybe it's real. Uh, <laughs> that's the way to go. Um, it may not pass authenticity, whatever it is. Um, Father, son, vintage cards. What's going on? Good to see you both. Let's see. So here's my, uh, unless anybody has any any uh, topics that they want to bring up, I'll give you guys an, another couple minutes here to see if anybody has anything they wanted to bring up. It could be card-related, YouTube-related, uh, baseball-related. I know the Phillies really had a terrible weekend against Minnesota. Um, some questionable umpiring, but... You know, can't blame it on the umpiring entirely. It's just kind of lackluster, lackluster play. Uh, but you know, still plenty of plenty of time left to uh, get back on track. Let's see. I'm already I'm already in the early stages of figuring out my next video. I've got another card coming in. Um, it's not on the same level as Stan the Man, but uh, a fun card, a card that I'm excited to get and thinking about the video that I want to put together. And that I said this last time, you know, part of the fun for me is like figuring out um, how to how to approach the video I want to make. I've also been spending today kind of looking around and you guys can't see it, but over on this side of my uh, space here in my room, uh, I've got like a whole bookshelf of uh, baseball books and memorabilia and stuff. And I've been thinking about reorganizing it and, uh, you know, just doing a, a bit of an overhaul. So that's been on my mind a lot today too. And that's always fun. is just like having the opportunity to sort of reassess the way that you set up your room and your display. Um, you know, some of us, uh, are lucky enough to have an entire room to do uh, some kind of a display or setup of our of our uh, collecting. Others of us maybe are not so fortunate. Um, you know, for whatever reason, it can be tricky to find the space. And you know, I've been in all kinds of situations. You know, this is my first house, but before this place, I've been in several apartments and didn't necessarily have a ton of space. So, part of the fun of it, I guess, is trying to figure out how to make it work with however much space you've got. And, uh, you know, for me personally, I try to, I try to keep it light. Uh, like I, uh, I, I don't want to like overwhelm my space too much, uh, if I can, but, um, but at the same time, man, I look around on eBay or anywhere and I'm just kind of seeing all kinds of stuff I want to get. So my walls are completely covered <laughs> in stuff and, uh, trying to, trying to keep it from going crazy. Uh, if you could have one card that you can't afford now, what would it be? Um, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I guess I'll just name a few cards that come to mind. The 52 Tops Jackie Robinson comes to mind. Um, any of the 33 Gowdy Ruths come to mind. I could go look at my list if you really wanted to know. I'm curious if you guys um, 
want to take a crack at this question. If you could have one card that you can't afford right now, uh, what card would that be? I can think of other cards that like I want and that technically I can't afford right now. But if I really wanted to I'd try to maybe afford them <laughs> and get myself into some trouble, which I don't want to do and I, and I will not do. There's nothing worse in this hobby than getting yourself into trouble financially. Don't do it. Not worth it. But those are two cards. Uh, well, I guess more than two cards that come to mind. Ruth DiMaggio, uh, not DiMaggio, uh, uh, Robinson. Let's see what else. I'm looking at my list now. Uh, the Ramley Walter Johnson. Uh, we're going to do a so I'll spill the beans now. We're going to do a, a session on the Ramley set next Sunday, and I'll have a, a special guest to help me out with that. That's going to be fun. I'm just going to go through the set and uh, and talk about how amazing it is and how much we wish we could afford to have the set. I mean, there are definitely affordable cards in that set, but the Walter Johnson is not one of them, and I would love to have that card. One of my all-time favorite cards is the T206 Ty Cobb Bat Off Shoulder. Now that's a very expensive card. It's not it's not completely outside the realm of possibility for me, but I wouldn't be able to get that card lightly. Like that's not, you know, that's not a casual purchase for me by any stretch of the imagination. Um it's one of those cards where I'm kicking myself because I I've always liked that card. That's that is my favorite card of all time and i've known that for many years but i held off on getting it for a myriad of reasons and now it's one of those cards that it's you know just sort of slowly but surely falling out of reach and i'm missing that you know i'm like right in that window of time where it might not be attainable so i really want to get that one um sometime soon if i can good evening sooner d there you go. So Dom and I are on the same page there. Dan says, my answer is not surprising. It's also the 33 Gaddy Ruth. Yeah, I mean, how, how could you go wrong? I mean, I like all three of those cards. I think everybody has a preference, you know, so, but honestly, for me, sometimes it changes. It might be the full the full batting pose. It might be the red one. It might be the yellow one. But honestly, all three of those cards are awesome. 1952 Jackie Mantle. Yeah, I didn't even mention the mantle, right? I mean, like... Yeah, I would certainly love to have that. <laughs> love to have that card. I don't even think of that card as like being something that's possible to own. I mean, I know it is, but I don't even think of that card as a card that can be possessed. Uh, Ace Fam Jim asks Alex, "What card have you been looking for the longest without actually finding a card that meets your criteria for that card?" Oh, that's a great question. Um, You know what? Uh, I don't know that this is the answer to your question, but the first card that comes to mind is the 1961 Topps Mickey Mantle. I've been looking at that card for years now, which might sound surprising because I don't have any 60s cards yet. I do have one 60s card coming in. My very first 60s card is, is on its way to me right now. But um, I've been looking at so many cards for years that I don't I don't have yet. And uh one that comes to mind, 61 Tops Mantle. Uh, there are tons and tons and tons of them out there, no doubt. It's not a it's not a rare card by any stretch of the imagination. Every time I go on eBay, there's like 20 new ones that have just been listed um, like three times a day. So it's not a card that is hard to come by. But I'm having a hell of a time finding one that doesn't have any snow, doesn't have any surface issues, is centered, and is a low grade. You know, because I I'm not I'm not after a five or a six or a seven or an eight for sure. Um, I'm a patient I'm a patient guy when it comes to cards, and I will wait for the right deal. But that's one that comes to mind where 
I've, I've, I've seen so many copies of that card and I have not found the right one. Uh, Alan says really nice um, bat off ending in REA tonight. Hello, ba hello, baseball investors. Yes, invest now. Invest now, everybody. Um, I already have a kick-ass tie cop card. Thank you. Yes, thank you, vintage cards. I love that. I love that tie cop card. It's it's to me, it's like the sort of uh, the underdog of the tie cop cards. I love that card. That being said, the the bat off shoulder. I mean, here it is, right here. Uh, if only that were a real one, right? It's a little, it's a little oversized. Um, that is definitely my favorite card. Larry says the green two T two oh six. That's a great, that's a great uh, card to want to get for sure. Rick says the nineteen fourteen Cracker Jack tie cop. Yeah, absolutely. Man, that would be incredible. Nineteen fifty Cracker Jack Joe Jackson. Excellent seeker cards. That is definitely, um, man. Yeah, you guys are making me change my mind. <laughs> uh, what's up, Beans Baseball Card Blog? Wife's not home. I can actually join live. What would your what What can we do to make this show more wife friendly? You know, is is there anything that we could do to uh, to liven up this session so that wives and girlfriends would be cool with us watching it when they're around? Because I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm, I'm at least willing to hear ideas like what what do what do women want from a sports card live stream that that we could try to deliver on. I'm not even gonna like speculate. I'll let I'll let you guys speculate. Um, but it's good to see you, man. Jason, what's up? Let's talk some cards. We're talking cards. So the question was, um, what's a card that you can't afford right now? that you would love to have in your collection. And another good question that Ace Fan Jim asked, which he asked me, but I'd love to hear what your guys' answer to this question is, is what card have you been looking for the longest without actually finding the card that meets your criteria? And my answer was the 61 Tops Mickey Mantle. Showing me, good to see you, man. Uh, this is a, uh, I don't know if this might, is a, this might be the first time you're in this live stream. Um, so I'll take the opportunity. For those of you that don't know this channel, the Show and Me has a fantastic uh, channel, relatively new. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you've been on for a few months. Um, and from what I can tell, um, collecting pre-war, I don't know if that's all you're collecting. I've, I've, I've seen a couple of your, of your videos. I haven't had a chance to watch everything yet. But I definitely know you are collecting pre-war, and you have a heck of a collection. So cool to see you in here and if any of you guys in here are into pre-war which i know most of you are you should definitely look up this channel and subscribe the end the 1916 m101-5 babe ruth don't care about the back yeah you can't really care about the back when it comes to pre-war right everybody says nobody cares about the back but let's be honest you want your back to have some kind of a a presence, except for pre-war, right? With pre-war, it's like, who cares? Because you know it's probably been pasted into a, a photo album or something. So for those of you that are not familiar with the 1916 M101-5, let's take a look at it. On eBay. So you might have to, you know, think about this kind of a purchase. But let's not worry about the price tag. Let's just enjoy the card. Um, and this one is a blank back. Yeah, th these are the kinds of cards where you find yourself not worrying about condition and corners and creases and so on. It's, it's like, I don't know about you guys, but it's like as long as – it's in relatively like reasonable condition and you can see the image and it's, you know, pretty decent. It's just exciting to have the card. My wife is a great sport about the hobby. And because of that, I don't want to press my, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good approach. I appreciate that. Yeah. You gotta like, 
you got to find that happy medium ground of um, keeping everybody content and and not and not pushing it too far. Yeah, I totally agree. Jason says the 1888 Goodwin Chansons. Sorry, good Goodwin Champions, Cap Anson. Yes, uh, definitely. I'm sure that everybody has that card in their head. I'm not even going to type it on eBay. Well, you might as well, just to see. Let's just see. Does eBay have this card? Ah, come on. It does. How about that? Not a terribly uh, great looking copy, but that is an awesome card for sure. What's up, Hammer44? Good evening to you. I probably looked at 100 green cob portraits before buying one at the National. Yeah, for sure, man. My, my pleasure. Uh, you would have to mix in truly kick-ass recipes from time to time. Sure. Uh, we can do that. I, I mean, full full disclosure. I'm I'm all for cooking. You know, we gotta we gotta eat. So, if we need to turn this into like a a cooking show, uh, my girlfriend, although she doesn't want to admit it, is a really good cook. So we can we can do that if we have to. Uh, vintage cards, Ace Fan Jam. I've been searching for a nice mid grade fifty three Bowman color, Eddie Matthews. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, Let's see what we have here on eBay. Like a lot of Bowman color uh, cards, the Matthews can be difficult to find centered. And here's another random thing that I remember from uh, searching for this card. If you check out the bottom of an Eddie Matthews Bowman color card. If you look really closely in the on the bottom left uh, of the card, right on the black border, you'll see a little red dot. And that little red dot is uh, pretty consistently found on, on every Eddie Matthews card. I'm sure there are some out there that don't have it, but most of them do have it. Um, and there's all sorts of little quirks like that throughout the whole set. I'm sure other sets have weird printing, things like that. But that one sticks in my head with the Eddie Matthews. Um, Dom says, uh, the 50 Bowman Yogi Bear. I've only recently been looking at that card, Dom. So I'm curious to hear what your uh experience has been looking at this card in terms of like what you're looking for and what you've been running into in terms of issues so just a a heads up for anybody that's new to the chat when i pull something up on ebay i'm not pulling it up because it's a good deal i'm just looking for a picture of it um so that we have something to look at but yeah, Don, I'm curious to hear what your what your experience has been with this card because this is a card that I have slowly kind of fallen in love with. Thanks to YouTube, honestly, because there have been a lot of YouTube channels out there, including Don from Don's Field of Dreams cards, that are big fans of this card. And I've I've like slowly but surely begun to realize that this card is one that I want to add to my collection. Oh, we're waiting for Dom's answer here. Uh, with pre-war, what is super cool is you can collect common players and enjoy the history and chase that comes with them. Yeah, I mean, I would make the argument that that's true for, you know, um, post-war too. But uh, but you're right. I mean, 
there are a number of cards in my i have a very small pre-war collection but the ones that i do have i would say like a maybe like a quarter of the cards that i have in pre-war are common players that have really fun stories and every one of them has a fun interesting story that's really been entertaining to read and look into and see the connections to other players and other teams and just things going on in the game that really to me elevates the appreciation of the card for sure yeah and that, that's that's right right i was just thinking about that too uh i remember fairly recently you just did that video yeah so this card has been kind of in the ether right uh, lately in in youtube and uh, it's a great one. This one, by the way, randomly is not that bad for a one five. I mean, there's a there's a crease going across his chest, but and there's a bit of a scratch. No, maybe it's not that great, but you know, from from a distance, this this is one of those cards that from a distance is not going to be so bad to look at. Uh, Mookie says a decent forty nine Bowman Larry Doby is currently just out of reach for me. Yeah, um, Mookie, I'm not sure if you follow uh, Reindeer Studios, uh, Scott. Uh, Scott can't be with us tonight because he's he's getting the star treatment. He's getting uh, interviewed on another live stream right now, so far as I understand. Um, he is a superstar. He calls us superstars, but really, he's the superstar. Um, anyway, he just picked up a 49 Bowman, Larry Doby, which is beautiful, and uh, he got it at the National, so you should definitely check that out if you haven't already. Okay, so here's the response. Dom says, centering is always an issue with that set, but so many of the low-grade ones in my price range have surface issues that usually distract me from the image. Yeah, for sure. And at first I wanted to say this one looked good, but then I saw the crease, and then it looks like somebody has looks like a pencil mark on the mitt, and it's like, okay, I I can't go for this one. So, yeah, I, I agree. The, sur the surface issues start to kind of grade on you, and... I don't want to. I don't want to get a card and then um, come to regret it. So I totally hear you on that. Um, Jason says, "I love the fifty-four tops bear. It's a great looking card. Let's go look at it. That's the. Uh, it's a Yogi Bear night. Yogi Bear has lots of fantastic cards. This is the green." One, right yeah let's look at a somewhat nice looking copy here all right we'll look at this one uh great looking card catcher cards have been speaking to me lately i picked up a 1939 play ball bill dickey at the national cool great looking card let's see 1939. Oops. Cool. I think we've looked at this card before on the live stream. Not recently, but that is a really cool card. So jealous of baseball collectors having so many cards specifically vintage to collect of your favorite sport. There's so little out there for me in my sport, auto racing, right? Yeah, I don't know what to tell you there. Um, are you still, are you still, like how, how often are you getting um, baseball cards? Okay, good. You saw Scott's video. Cool. Dom was able to hold it. Very special moment. Timeless Cardboard says, 
1919 Z-Nut. I'm always excited when somebody brings up Z-Nut. I think Z-Nuts are some of the most underappreciated cards. Oh, this Fatty Arbuckle. I think... Um, yeah, that's so obscure that eBay, eBay is like does not compute. Uh, <laughs> I think... Uh, I've said cards may have this card. I don't know if he has this exact card. Um, but this is an absolute classic. There it is. The 1919 Z-Nut Pacific Coast League Fatty Arbuckle. Without coupon, so don't get your hope up, don't get your hopes up for a coupon because it ain't there. From the Merkin collection, that's a really fun card. So much harder with the fifty bomb and two because you have so little surface. Yeah, for sure. What's up, Orlando? Yeah, it's got you know <laughs> you've got a little like a postage stamp size baseball card compared to the giants of tops and so on. So it's gotta be, uh, it's gotta be perfect. Anybody else want to throw in, um, the two, the two questions of the night so far have been one, it's a card that you can't afford it right now that you would love to get. Just one card. And the other question was, what's a card that you've been looking at a lot but haven't been able to pull the trigger on because of condition issues? Jimmy says I'm going hard in the paint for an obscure 33 Gowdy. Hall of Famers like Sam Rice, Joe Sewell, Jim Bottomley. Okay, cool. Any any particular uh, angle on it? Like, are are you just a big fan of the Gaudi set, or like, how did you how did you decide on on that on that hobby goal? Let's take a look at some of these cards. 33 Gaudi is one of those sets where it's almost like no matter which card you want to get from the set, you're going to make a good decision. I feel the same way about, of course, I feel the same way about 53 Bowman, but but Diamond Star set is another set where you could just pick any card from it and you'll be glad you got it. I feel I feel like 33 Gaudi, Gaudi falls into that category for me as well. Even a card like that, where like there's not a whole lot going on and the color palette is pretty limited, still amazing, amazing artwork. Jim Bottomley. Oh my gosh, that's a great card. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Diamond Stars, Jimmy Fox. It's not jumping in my head right away. Really? Really? You don't like that card? It's not my favorite Jimmy Fox card, but I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> it looks like the kid from the Sandlot. I mean, honestly, that makes it even cooler. Sorry. 
Jason, uh, been looking at a bunch of 33 Gaudi da, Dazzy Vance. I can't speak tonight. But I've not found one in the condition the price that I'd like. All right. 33 Gaudi. Can't speak or spell. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Well, this one has, you guys probably can't see it on your screen, but if you were to look this card up, this card has a, a really interesting condition issue. It almost looks like this card has contracted a disease. I don't know what's going I don't know if Dazzy was sick at the time or what it's like covered in pox uh 34 gaudi luke appling cool that's a cool card Oops, sorry. Uh, two cards I'm chasing, but I haven't found the right price. Um, slash condition. 54 tops K-Line and 57 tops Aaron. Right. Um, I've got the 54 tops K-Line bookmarked, and I've had it bookmarked for years, but I, I don't really actively look at it. Um. It's a card that I want, but it's not a card that I've been super motivated to get. So when that day does come, it'll be interesting to see if I have the same experience that you're having. Uh, yes, the Diamond Stars Al Lopez, I have that card. It's awesome. It looks like a cartoon. I mean, they all are very sort of, you know, kind of comic booky, but that one in particular is really... Uh, amusing to me. A vintage card that I'd like to have but haven't been able to convince myself to spend the money on is a 52 tops. Uh, Jim Friley, he pitched at my alma mater and 52 tops is a high number. Ah, those high numbers. F or Fridley, is it Fridley? And these are all, it's like reprints. Oh, and it's a rookie card too. I mean, I think it's kind of fun. If it's a high number, 52 tops, get a one. And if it's all chewed up, it's like, it's a high number. There's a great, uh, I, I posted a, a link to it a few days ago. There's a great video on a um, relatively new YouTube channel that's called Phillies Baseball Cards Story, Legend, and Lore. So I, of course, like it because I'm a Phillies fan. But great new channel. Uh, again, Phillies, I'll, I'll, I'll copy here. I'll, I'll put the, this is not the link, but I'll put the name of the channel in here. So you can look this channel up. This is a great new channel. Giving him a shout out here. And uh, two weeks ago, I'm looking at his channel right now. He did a video called Baseball Card Stories, the 1952 Tops High Numbers. And it was a really entertaining video about, obviously, the 52 Tops High Numbers, but particularly a card that he was trying to track down. And the story of how he found it is is really entertaining it's a really good video i definitely recommend that channel and that video here's dan uh has a 34 appling uh let me go back and pull that card up but it ungraded at the philly show several years ago has a hairline crease and a stain on the back now it's sgc 1.5 but it presents beautifully cool
Jason says, uh, White Sox fan, so the 34 app link is a must for my collection. Jason, do you have a channel? And have I asked you that already? Because um, I tend to ask that question a lot. So I may have asked you that before. Jimmy says, has the Al Lopez 38 Gowdy big head? It's my only 38. I do have a 38 Mel Ott Gowdy flip book, though. Jimmy, did you ever are you are you going to answer as to why you decided to go over, uh, after thirty three Gaudi Hall of Famers? Just curious. Um, okay, well, this has been fun, guys. Uh, here's the here's the random question that I thought of that I wanted to ask all of you. Um, as you guys know, I primarily stick in the nineteen fifties. I also collect pre war, um, and I kind of go back and forth. Right now, I'm kind of in the fifties with the exception of this one card that's coming in uh, this week. But here's my question for you. Uh, what to you is a set from the 50s, Pops or Bowman, that you are least drawn to? Not that you don't like it necessarily maybe you don't maybe you hate it and if you hate it that's cool you can you know you should say that i hate that set but <laughs> it might just be a set that you're like either not that familiar with haven't really spent any time looking at it uh haven't really got any cards from it or just just haven't really gotten into it yet just one one uh one year whether it's tops or bowman from the 50s that you find you're just not drawn to or you, you know it's not it's like the the set that you're least interested in as of right now because i feel like these things change so i don't want to it's not necessarily like an all-timer thing i'm just curious to hear from you guys oh jason okay very soon with the channel orlando and others at the national war encouraged me to start a channel do it dude um, and when you do, make sure you uh, make sure you you come back and let us all know. And we'll we'll subscribe. There are plenty of other White Sox uh, channels out there too that you can that you can connect with. It'll be fun. They just speak to me. I like that answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. I mean, that's that's pretty much why I collect anything. They like there's just cards that that you just feel drawn to okay hammer says uh 59 tops um so here so here's my question um i'm gonna i'm gonna pick one of these out so secret cards says 54 bowman show on me says 55 bowman i do not like brown anything on cards <laughs> okay uh dan says um not drawn to the 1950 Bowman set, the nearly square, smaller cards, mostly all portraits. Okay, let's do this one. So here's so here's what I was hoping would happen. Um, so what I want to do now is those of you that do like cards from the 50 Bowman set, um, what are some cards from the 1950 Bowman set that you do really like? Because um, I think it would be kind of fun to take a look at that set and see if there are any cards that jump out at you. Um, I do this all the time. There are, there are certain, and this is why I wanted to do this because I have a couple sets that I want to ask you guys about. There's always sets that I'll come back to that I've kind of like overlooked or haven't been that drawn to. And I want to revisit them and ask myself if there's anything in that set that I actually do like. And we've got, we've already got some answers coming in here. So Orlando says 1950 Ted Williams. And this is not, this is not like, you know, this isn't, we're not trying to, I'm not trying to change uh, Dan's mind or anything. It's just, I think it's fun to like look up 
cards from 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 sets that you're not necessarily drawn to. And I would say that a lot of people probably feel the same way as you do, Dan. That like 50, 50 Bowman's not a set that like first jumps in mind is like a set that you're excited about. Ted Williams. I've actually so I've kind of I've got this a lot. So this is good. This is a good one, Orlando. I know the fifty-one is like the same image. I've decided that I I think I like the fifty-one more than the fifty, and it's honestly because the fifty-one. Um, has clouds in it. I know that sounds ridiculous, but and it, you know, like yes, it's longer and it has his name on it. But also there are clouds, and I'm a su I'm a sucker for baseball cards with clouds. So for me, it's got to be the, the 51. But the 50 Bowman is is nice too. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Alan mentions the Rizzuto. That card is definitely on my wish list. I'm a sucker for leaping infielders. Definitely. So Jason says the Ted Williams, um, but also the Warren Spawn. Yeah, is the, is the Warren Spawn the one where he's doing the leg kick and he's got that sort of green yeah it's like he looks like he's in a sand lot with some kind of green ratty old you can do it Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, I got, uh, I've gone back and forth on this card so much. I have I have so many. It's funny because I'm not a player. I'm not a player collector, and sometimes I'll get like two or three cards, and somebody will say, you should do a player run. I'm not a player run collector, but – there are some times where I just like so many of a player's cards that I might as well do a player run. And <laughs> Warren Spawn is one of those guys. This is a card that has kind of come on and off my list a number of times. And now it's coming back on my list. Cause every time I look at it, it's like, yeah, that's such a great card. I literally just wrote that card down. Let me close some of these windows because it's, it's getting a little crowded in here. Here's a little flashback on the last half an hour. Uh, who else do we got? Jimmy says the 1950 Gil Hodges. Yeah. It's good with the, the yellow and the blue. Uh, as Jason says here, a lot of the 50 and 51 Bowman shared the same images. Um, yep. So Dan's kind of confirming here. Spawn has the same shot. Frillo, Hodges. Yeah. And that, that's another, that's another reason why, um, you know, it's, it's funny because Bowman, I mean, none of these card collecting or sorry, <laughs> none of these card companies were were thinking about posterity like they were they weren't really thinking about how anybody was going to catch them in the act of of reusing stuff um we're all we're all talking about it now who who, who knew that people would be talking about baseball cards with as much intensity as we are here 50 60 years later um what's up rocket rick yep we were talking about the 50 yogi bear not too long ago 
Um, uh, his 60 cards don't speak to me at all, and I stopped his player run at 57. Yeah. Um, I think I feel the same way. I mean, clearly my favorite fit is the fit, the, uh, the Bowman color spawn, but, uh, but I'm sure it would run out. I, I have a lot of sixties cards in my wish list, even though I don't have any of them yet, but I'm having so much fun in the fifties and there are great cards. There are definitely great cards in the sixties, but I'm like, for whatever reason, less for them. 1950 Aaron Robinson. Is that a Bowman? I'm going to guess it is. Oh, yeah. That's a cool card. Not a card that you uh, see every day. I like it. Okay, so here's the here's the set that I want to ask you guys about. Help me out here. The 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 biggest set from the '50s that I have a real problem with, and uh, haven't really spent much time digging into, is the 1958 Tops set. I just have not been able to get into it. I don't know if it's the photography or I mean I should I should be into it because I mean I like the idea of like the solid color background and like they I don't know. I can't I can't I haven't been able to get into it and I can't explain why really. Well I mean I can. I think it's the photography, but um I want I want some suggestions on like what are your favorite 1958 tops cards is there is there like a if you if you had to like pick a favorite 1958 tops card which would it be okay so i'm not alone <laughs> Dan, thank you well maybe that's the other reason yeah that's another reason uh is that I'm I'm I've discovered that I'm really into into New York City baseball and that was a bad year. But I mean I don't only collect that, so there's got to be other stuff, right? So I'm I I, I wanna I wanna find one. <laughs> yeah, definitely definitely not Brooks Robinson. Jason says I love the background colors of the fifty eight top says the K line red. Aaron Green and May Blue together are very cool. Okay, let me look up because I I can picture the Hank Aaron and the Willie Mays, but not the K line. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Okay, Rick says here, uh, 1958 Tops, Warren Spawn. Bad a bad copy let's see a little better dan says only car collect brooklyn dodgers so my runs end in 1957 right yeah i think you and i are on the same page dan Um, yeah, the Warren Spawn's all right. Uh, Jason says the 58 Tops Maze.
Yeah. I have this weird thing about Maze where I know most of his like career achievements were in San Francisco. But I always think of I, I always kind of like idealize his New York period because I mean, as you guys know, that's what I collect. The Maris, that's right. So Hammer Six, uh, sorry, Hammer Forty Four says the mayor is for sure, but agree on the lack of creativity. They are all mostly headshots. Yeah, I don't even mind. I don't even necessarily mind the headshots. It's like, I don't know what it is. There's something about the photography that I that I'm not like super drawn to. But the Maris is a nice one, and it has good color. What's up, Larry? Kurt Flood. Yeah, that's a good call. And that, that, I mean, that's an important card, an important uh, figure in baseball for sure. D Collection has a nice video on the 58 top set he completed, might inspire you on the set. D Collection, I don't know that I know that channel. Kind of just type in D Collection. You know, sometimes with these searches, oh yeah, there it is. Unless this is not, <laughs> I don't think this is it. I just typed in D collection and I'm looking at Pakistani wedding dresses. I don't think that's what you're trying to point me to. Let's see. Uh, you know, sometimes with YouTube, whenever you type in, you just don't know what you're going to find. Oh, D's collection. Oh, and I'm okay. I'm subscribed to him. Oh, I see it here. Yeah, 1958 Tops baseball complete set. Cool. Well, I'm gonna bookmark this channel or this video and take a look at it later. Thank you. <laughs> the all-stars in the end of the set are good and could be iconic. Yeah. Um, I have, I'm just trying to go back to my list here. Like for example, the, uh, the usual all star is a card that I would like to get. I like this card a lot. I think the all star cards are pretty fun. So we're gonna have we're gonna be we're gonna talk baseball cards, guys. We're gonna talk cooking. We're gonna talk wedding dresses. Um, we're gonna have a great time. So invite your invite your girlfriends, invite your wives. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, the most eclectic live stream there ever was. Rocket Rick, I always thought the fifty-eight Cepeda looks like he's floating in midair. Fifty-eight top Cepeda. I think I know what you're talking about. Yes, it's <laughs> because he is. <laughs> He's levitating. Fifty eight tops are great for autographs. Oh, 
Oh, here you got you got a couple of them in here. Yeah, I I would imagine so because you've got so much of a solid color, right? That the that the uh, signature must really pop. That's a that's a great idea. See, now that's cool. I love I love stuff like that where it's like it's it's not just building the set. It's it's a very particular um, way of approaching it. Some of you guys may not know this channel, but this is a this is a channel that goes that is sort of a legendary channel um, in the YouTube world. His uh, the YouTube channel's name is Joey Brings It. And some of you guys that have been around know that name, but unfortunately he hasn't made videos in a couple of years. Um, when I first started collecting the Bowman color set and didn't know about YouTube or this community or anything, I just went on YouTube and typed in baseball cards wondering what I would find. One of the first channels I found was Joey Brings It. And Joey is a super cool guy, loves the hobby, vintage collector, and he was – putting together the 53 Bowman color set. And so I got excited because I was in the early days of doing that myself. And I got really inspired by him and his channel. And he had such a passion for that set that was really infectious. But one of the cool things about the way that he collected that set, was he collected it autographed. And boy, I'll tell you the the Bowman color set with autographs is such a great idea and so beautiful because, you know, those those cards, of course, are not cluttered because they're just the photo. You don't have the guy's name or the team or anything else like that. And so, you know, autograph baseball cards, that's not for everybody. Some people don't like that. I totally get it. But uh, it was cool to see somebody targeting that set in that way. And the cards looked amazing with those autographs on them. So... I think there are certain sets that really lend themselves to autographs and yeah, 58 tops autographed probably makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Jason, that's correct. That was, that's Musial's first tops card. Um, Orlando got the Cepeda auto. That's cool at the national. That's confirmed by Mookie. <laughs> um, and Jimmy says the 58 All-Star stand is the only tops card for him that year. Cool. Okay. Well, you guys kind of you kind of confirmed what I was feeling about 58 tops. So I feel a little bit better. Um, here's a little bit more of an obscure ask, because some of you guys may not know this set very well, but um a few of you I know definitely do. Uh Burke Ross. I'm always interested in Burke Ross because it just feels like it's this outlier from the 50s with a lot of big names in it. Um, but I've never really kind of wrapped my head around it. And I'm curious if you guys have any favorite Burke Ross cards. Um, Dan, I know you just got one pretty recently. But I'm just, you know, whether you have one or not, just Burke Ross cards that you guys think are cool interesting doesn't have to be a hall of famer can be a common as well jason says 51 mutual and dimaggio burke ross let me close some of this stuff up here Maybe not a good idea to try looking for this on eBay. Well, here you go. Oh, yeah, this is the fielding one, right? Definitely a unique shot of Stan. So what did I do here? Yeah, that the DiMaggio is kind of cool. It's it's a little 
I mean, the, the Burke Ross one, there's something really kind of funky about. how they're made, how they're printed. But the DiMaggio one is pretty cool. What's up, Rick? Willie Mays. Sure, yeah. I've seen this before, but it's been a while. Yeah. If I grab my pen, guys. <laughs> it's just interesting to hear everybody's different opinions out there and get some advice picked up Burke Ross Billy Martin rookie card at the national cool I don't know that that image comes into my head right away the Burke Ross Billy Martin let's see nice I don't think I've ever, I don't know that I've ever seen that if that's the right one They, they seem like cards that were left in the sun. Yeah, there's something really odd about the, the printing process, like I said. I'd, I'd be curious to to learn more about it. Larry Doby, Burke Ross. I should just be typing in. Oh, that's nice. It's a cool card. Um, Ted Williams. Yeah. It's funny, uh, the, the coloring of, of the Ted Williams kind of reminds me of uh, the Leaf cards, which have like a sort of a, an eclectic color combination sometimes. And the Robinson, of course, here he is. some registration issues. Jason says, I feel the 51 DiMaggio is still a card that can be had for relatively cheap, at least as far as playing day DiMaggio's go. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely uh, a plus for that card. Shining Star in the 58 Tops is the Mantle and Aaron World Series batting foes. Yes, and I have that card, and I love that card. That is an awesome card in that set. Good call. Rocket Rick says 50 Burke Roths, Tommy Heinrich. Cool. That's a great shot. As far as set building goes, Dan says the 51 Burke Ross is an easier set to complete. I'm 25 out of 40 right now, but have all the big cards. So you're well on your way then. Very cool. 
All right, guys. Well, this is probably a good place to stop. I appreciate um, your help. This was kind of fun. Uh, we'll probably do this again sometime, just like coming up with different sets from different eras. It doesn't have to be just the 50s. We'll, we'll do other eras of maybe sets that you're not familiar with or that you maybe aren't that taken by and just looking up cards from that set. I think it's always fun to kind of revisit sets and kind of try to look at them with a fresh perspective. Um, because we all just need to have more cards to look for, right? That's maybe not the best idea, but uh, it's fun nonetheless. So uh, next Sunday, uh, I'll have a special guest with me, and we're going to go through a Ramley set that was up for auction. Uh, this was an idea that was sent in, and I think it's a great idea. So we're going to go through the set and just talk about the set and uh, – just drool at the beauty of the Ramley cards. If you don't know anything about that set, you're in for a treat um, because they're absolutely gorgeous and it's filled with all sorts of players with uh, some, some names that you're absolutely going to recognize and others that perhaps are obscure and um, neither myself nor the guest that's coming in have any of these cards, but we have a lot of enthusiasm for them. And if you have a Ramley card or two or three, um, I hope you'll come next Sunday and bring your cards out and uh, and share them with us because it's going to be a little bit of a Ramley Sunday evening. So until then, uh, just a reminder, guys, that my contact information is in the description below. Email me, Instagram me, tweet me, whatever you want to do. If you have any ideas or suggestions for future sessions, uh, so until next Sunday, I hope everybody has a great evening and a great week and enjoy that hobby out there. Take care. everybody. Have a good night. Thanks so much. See you soon.